And welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church Midweek Discipleship Lesson Series. Mount Sinai under the pastorship of Reverend Randy G. Vaughn. My name is Brother Herman Bradman, and I'm so glad and so privileged to be able to present the lesson for today. Our text for today is Acts 5th chapter 1 through 7. Before we start, Father God, we are indeed grateful and thankful, Lord, for this beautiful, lovely day. We thank you, Lord, even in the midst of a global pandemic, for all the many and the mighty blessings that you bestow upon us every day. We believe, Lord, in fact, we know that you are still in charge. And that even in spite of what goes on globally, that you are a universal God. Not just global, but universal. You are the universal God. He has charge over everything. Thank you once again, dear Lord, for this opportunity. We are praying that the words from my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. Thank you. We praise you. We love you. And we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. I did say that our lesson text discipleship lesson text today is from the Acts, the Acts of the, the Acts of the Holy Spirit actually through, through the Apostles. And it's Acts the fifth chapter 1 through 11. And I will read. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife soul of possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being private to him, and brought a certain part and laid it at the, at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not found? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt Spirit of the Lord. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth buried her by her husband. And great fear 
came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Ananias and his wife Sapphira. The events that led up to the events that led up to our lesson for today. It was to the, to, when Jesus, after he had risen from the grave, and just before he ascended into heaven, he had commanded the disciples to remain in Jerusalem until they received the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. Then Jesus ascended up to his Father. The apostles and a number of other disciples, about 120 all told, gathered in an upper room where they were all on one accord in prayer and in supplication. It was at this time also when the 11 apostles took the opportunity to replace Judas, who of course now was dead, they replaced him with one named Matthias. And he is the one that took Judas to church. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, all of the disciples were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Now this, when the Holy Ghost came and fell upon the disciples, that was the point at which the church was born. That was the birth of the church when the Holy Ghost came and filled those disciples. The multitude, the multitude there, they were a mixture there were a mixture of Jews that came from, from all over the globe. The, the, the Bible says that from almost every nation under the sun, these Jews came in from, from many different directions, from many different nations, and they all, despite the fact that they spoke different languages, each heard the words of the gospel in his own language. Later on, Peter preached. Peter stood and he preached. He preached Jesus and him crucified and who crucified him. And him raised from the dead. And many souls were added to the church. Many, many souls were added. Thousands of souls were added to this brand new church. Acts 2, 44 and 45 read, And all that believed were together and had all things in common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man has need. And then going to the fourth chapter of Acts, 34 and 35, said that neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according to as he was needed. These new Christians, this new church was made up of, 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 of those from all over the globe. And they were all in, in Jerusalem. Some without no means at all of making a living. They had a need for food, they had a need for shelter. And there are no other entity, there are no other institution to help all of these new Christians ex 
accept the church. So the church, it was their responsibility, they took it upon themselves to sell their goods and take the price, the money, therefrom. They had the apostles' feet, and the apostles would distribute these funds as were necessary. Our lesson for today is that for a man, for a man named Ananias and his wife, they sold a possession, but together they decided to keep part of the money for themselves. They were members of the new church. They had confessed Jesus. They were believers. They were numbered among the disciples just like the rest of them. This man named Ananias and his, and his wife survived. But they together decided that they were not, they sold a possession and they decided that they were not going to bring all the money forth, that they would keep part of it for themselves. And Ananias came to the apostles with a lie in his heart, declaring, if not in words, surely in, in his attitude, that this is all the money that was received for the possession that they had sold. The Holy Spirit, it had to be the Holy Spirit, because the apostles knew right away, so it had to be revealed to them by the Holy Spirit that Ananias was lying. I don't know any other way that the apostles could have known immediately that Ananias was lying about the amount that he had received from the possession that he had sold. Peter said, Ananias, how is it that you have allowed Satan to fill your heart and to keep some of that money? Ananias, the land was yours. You owned it. And after you sold it, the money was yours. It was yours. You could have kept it. You could have kept it all if you wanted to. It, it, it was yours. If you had made a, a, a vow to give it up and had changed your mind, that would have that would, that, that would have went well either. But a, a broken vow would have been. But you went a step further than just a, a broken vow to not give it. You walk up here with your head in the air, your chest stuck out, as if you've given according to your agreement as a church member. And you have. You, you come up just in a manner that you have met this obligation, that you have given this offering that you agreed to, and you have not. And you think that you have just lied to us and to people. But as lies, you have lied to God. After, after Ananias heard these words, he fell, he fell down and he died. Verse 6 says, the young men Strong young men arose, wrapped Ananias up, and took him out and buried him. Verse 7 says, in about, the, in about the span of three hours, here comes his wife, Sapphira, before the apostles. Peter asked Sapphira, did you receive such and such money for the land? Now, now Sapphira was in a 
better position than my husband Anna, Ananias was. Because Ananias was never asked uh, any questions. He, Ananias just came with the money. And people say, you, you lying about the amount of it. But he asked, he asked at, uh, of Sapphira, is this the uh, amount of money that was received for, 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 for that possession? And Sapphira, she had the opportunity to come to me. She had the opportunity to tell the truth. And I tell you what, she would have come to me. She would have told the truth. Had she known what had just happened to her husband, she would have, she would have come to me. But instead, she kept the lie going. And said, yes, this is what we receive for the man. Peter said, how is it that you and your husband have agreed to lie to the Holy Spirit? Then in one more sentence, then in one short sentence, their father learns that not only her husband is dead, but that she's about to join him. Their father then dropped dead. And those same strong young men carried her out and buried her next to her husband. This story is a tragic story. It's a sad story of Ananias and Sapphira. It is not so much about an amount of money that was offered to God through the church. It is about the lie and the prophecy that came with the money. While all were making sacrifices, they were making a sacrificial offering for, for that present necessity. They came forward with an offering and a lie. As members of the church, as members of the church, as, as, as they claimed to be disciples of the church, they were in agreement to give an adequate offering for the support of the ministry. I say it again, that as disciples, as church members, they were in agreement, or, 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 or covenant, actually, to give adequate offering for the support of the ministry. They came with some money and a lie, and it cost them their lives. Now we too, as church members, are in agreement, under covenant, as you will, to bring an adequate offering for the support of the ministry of the church. Even in these times of global pandemic, I should say especially in these times of global pandemic, we need to, we as disciples and members of the church, we need to see to it that the ministries of the church are continuing to be supported. In spite of social distancing, distancing Despite of all that's going on, in fact, like I said, especially with all that's going on, we need to support the church. And over and on, when, we, when the church met, when the church was still meeting on Sunday morning, congregation, my, I usually said in the pulpit, most Sundays I was in the pulpit. When it was time for when it was time for offering, I was I was I was pretty busy while I was in the pulpit. I stand up, go in my back pocket, pull out my wallet, and, 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 and everybody could see. I'm about to get 
into nothing. I'm pulling out my wallet. And I would, I would go into my wallet and, 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 and take out some money. And, 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 and sometimes I would flash it a little bit. So, so they know it's just not a dollar I'm pulling out. That is, some of the other founding fathers are a dead president. That I'm not pulling out one of George Washington. Yeah, I, I kind of flash it a little bit so they know that, that, that I'm giving a decent offer. But then the question that comes to me, what about now? What about what what about what am I going to give now? No one is going to know whether I gave an offering or not, or how much. They won't even know whether or not I even gave an offering. So, so, so what about now? Am I going to, am I going to continue with my obligation to give an offering to the church for the support of the ministry? And I have decided that if I can stand on the pulpit and flash money, that even in these times of pandemic, even these times of social distancing, even at these times when we're not meeting in the church building, that my offering will still go forth as before. In, in fact, in fact, me and my wife has made a decision, we discussed it and made a decision that we would not only continue our offering as usual after after paying tithes, of course, but that we would up our offering a bit because of these trying times. That we would that we would give even more than we were given before as an offering. Because of these trying times. The day I said I'll make make the check out for, for, for my for my tithes. And we decided I, I, I made a check out for, for my for the offerings. And uh, I included I included offerings that I would be making at, at, at Sunday morning, Sunday school hour, church service hour. And that amount of money that would be given during Wednesday discipleship study here on Wednesday. And I wrote what I knew was was, was, was above what we would normally normally give. And then as I finished writing the check, my wife said, Oh, you got one more to write. <laughs> and that's for that's for seniors a lot. I said, What? She said, Yeah. We got, she said, and we are one month behind on our support of seniors alive. And so you, you write that check, you, you make it double. So, so I wrote that check and I made it double. When we, when we bring to God as an offering, we pray that, or we should pray, that what we offer to God, whether in service, or um, uh, any monetary offering is acceptable in this sight. It is an offering that we hope God accepts. It's not, it's not a payment. It, it is what we offer. And it's up to God whether our offering is or is not acceptable. Ananias, Sapphire, they paid the ultimate price for the hypocrisy that they showed when offering, when making an offering to God. I have decided that I'm going to pray always that what I give to God, brother, monetary or service-wise is acceptable in his sight. That should be our goal. We are disciples. We are disciples of Jesus Christ and minister in the church of Jesus Christ. And our responsibility is to the, the, the support of that ministry no matter what. We should keep in mind that we should always, always bring our own offering before the offering, before the altar of God. I thank you.
Thank you. Appreciate you listening. God bless you. God keep you be our prayer. This has been a presentation by the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church Online Ministry. We are located at 501 West Thomas Boulevard in Port Arthur, Texas. If you are in need of prayer, please call 409-982-6464, extension 102. If you are searching to know more about Christ, please contact us via our website, and one of our ministers will be in contact with you. If you are without a church home, we invite you to join us. Please join this ministry by going to our website at www.mountsinimbc.com. That's www.mountsinimbc. Dot com. Also, if you would like to donate to this ministry, we invite you to do so. Donations are accepted online, by mail, and in person. Please review options on giving on our website. Thank you for joining us. Please come again. May the grace of our Lord and Savior be with you always.